Hey, you know what's awesome? Voting. Hell yeah, voting was so awesome. I want everyone to know how awesome voting is. Well, luckily you can. Fair Fight is a grassroots organization started by Stacey Abrams in Georgia. Their mission is to fight for voters' rights and encourage people to vote. There's a Senate runoff election in Georgia on Tuesday, January 5th. They're focusing their efforts on those races now with volunteers and donations, so that's certainly one way we can help folks vote right now. That's so good to hear. I almost feel kind of okay about the future. It will be a hard fight, but progress is definitely being made. Well, until then, let's roll the video. This is an Xmas countdown, or a Christmas countdown. The holidays are low key this year, or at least they, they should be. Uh, but, you know, a countdown is a nice, you know, quiet way to get festive. As we've talked about on the channel before, counting is great. Numbers, wonderful. Can always, you know, find some tranquility in the stability and dependability of numbers. And you know, also what's more low key than a grayscale e-ink display? I mean, it's dignified. It's gonna look classy behind you. Uh, for your video calls, very nice addition. It really checks all the boxes, or in this case, bobbles. But how, how do you work? Explain yourself. First off, it's running on an Adafruit MagTag board, uh, which uh, is based on the ESP32 S2 and has this built-in e-ink display. I'm enjoying the increasing amount of boards that have all these bells and whistles because there's there's other stuff on here too, not just the ink, but it just makes things really compact. Also, the way that the hardware is implemented with the different uh, peripherals, parts, etc. It might give you ideas that maybe you wouldn't have had otherwise if you were just thinking of all the parts, you know, separate, floating around in space. This tree, though. See, the, the Xmas tree, uh, which was created by Naya Ruiz, because you wouldn't want to see the one that I would create. It, it's actually a bitmap with the, the the bobbles with the numbers already on it. So that's just part of the image. Uh, how this project works is there's actually these circles that are part of the code graphically um, that hides and reveals the numbers. The reason why I bring this up is a few folks said to me, you know, you could randomize where the numbers are, which, which is very chaotic energy that I admire, by the way. Uh, however, uh, you can't really do that with this, this setup, so uh, we tricked you. Ha! The code, though. Um, you know, everyone loves code walkthroughs. No, they, no, they don't. But I do, so let's, let's humor me for a second, okay? And let's walk through this code that I wrote. I want to talk about it, okay? This is my video. Uh, so first off, you know, here's the code. Um, the MagTag library has this awesome function, network.connect, uh, that makes connecting to a network super simple. You don't have to get into any of the guts or nonsense. Uh, next up, we have three graphics groups. The uh, tree group, well, it handles the, um, the tree. And then the circle group, it handles the uh, circles. Yeah. Uh, but then both of these groups here, which is now starting to look like a football play or what I imagine a football play looks like, uh, is going to go into the big group so that the trees and the circles can be best friends. So next, this whole thing here is just bringing the tree bitmap in, putting it into the tree group, and then adding the tree group to the main group. Cool, cool. Next here we have this list called spots, um, and spots has all these numbers. What are these numbers? They're the X and Y coordinate for all the circles. And thank God I was able to pull in that info from the Photoshop document. And then the circles, the actual circles, are created with this for statement. Uh, and so they're made one by one using the circle graphical function from Display.io. And we're pulling in the X and Y data from spots. So these are getting pulled into here to make our circles. And then each circle as it's made is added to the circle group. Very nice, very nice. And after the circle group is all set, then that gets added to the main group. So we make our circles, we add each circle to the circle group, and then we put the circle group into the main group so that you have the tree that was chilling by itself, but now it's got all these 
circles happening. Also of note, the default color for all of these circles, it comes out as like a gray on the gray scale. Hmm. So as a result, by default, all of the numbers on the tree are going to be covered up. You can't see them. You can't see them. They, they aren't there. Now we're going to take a hard left turn, my left, uh, and we're going to talk about time and how it's a man-made construct. No, uh, there's this function called get local time from in the Maytag, Magtag library, not Maytag, that's a fridge. Um, this could go in your fridge. Anyway, uh, where you get the local time. Uh, coding doesn't have to be cryptic, you know, it can be very straightforward. I want to get the local time, great, I'm going to call the get local time function. Uh, but once you get the time, you can parse it into things that you can understand with the local time function. Okay, that's a little finicky. But what this function does is it, it makes it so that you can parse the time bits, like the date, the month, the hour, etc., into an array, and then you can pull that out for your own unique purposes. Uh, in this case, we really need to know the day. We need to know the, the date number. The reason why we need to know the date number, and we'll use it to select which numbers are revealed on the tree, and we'll know what the date is and how many days have passed. This done with a for statement that's right here. Uh, it iterates through the circles graphics group with the date acting as the range. And it changes the color for these affected circles to none, which basically means that they are see-through. So now, you know, let's make the tree a little bigger. You get like one, two, but then the rest are like hidden. You don't know what's coming next. It's all a mystery. For example, if it's the ninth, which is today, uh, then all of the circles leading up to and including nine have a fill of none and as a result are hidden so that we can see the bitmap unobstructed. Okay, okay, last last bit. This is an e-ink display, so we have to do some things to get all the stuff to show up on it. First, we have to send the group to the display, say like, show it, I wanna see it. Uh, those are bad eyes. Uh, and then we need to refresh the display because you need, on an e-ink display, you need to get all the little bits and particles aligned properly. Uh, Colin from Adafruit is doing this great video series on e-ink displays. Definitely check those out. You'll, you'll learn something. It'll be great. Uh, and then afterwards, finally, the last step, we're going to tell this thing to take a nap. Seriously. Like, we're, we're going we're gonna to put it to sleep. For 12 hours, that's, that's 43,200 seconds. Oh, hey. Uh, editing Liz here uh, in another wonderful flannel. Uh, there is actually a PR that someone wrote for the code uh, that's in right now, and I'm currently testing it, uh, that has it so that it updates at midnight every day instead of the 12 hour thing. So it's like kind of a little clock. So that's nice. So I'll be in soon. Uh, after this thing wakes up and runs through the whole code from the top again, it, it goes up, oh, goes all the way up to the top, and we come back down and we go back to sleep. So there's no loop, it's just one one long message that you follow. There is a learn guide and it has all the information you could ever want or need or yearn for, uh, for like setting up the mag tag with CircuitPython, um, getting the code file, getting the bitmap, and of course the lovely STL for this beautiful 3D printed sleigh stand and can confirm it prints beautifully. No support, you print it in this orientation. See that, like this, so it goes yeah, also designed by Nay. Wonderful, wonderful. Secures with some screws on the back. Yes, it's, it's very nice. So yeah, as you're keeping the holidays low key this year, you know, get a nice grayscale countdown tree going on your sleigh. You know, you could print this in gray filament, really get that, you know, 1950s sitcom effect. But thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you maybe try this project out. You don't necessarily have to use a mag tag. I mean, you could kind of use the code um, for other e-ink displays. You're just connecting to the internet, grabbing the date, time, and updating. That's all. Came to me while I was watching Ask an Engineer show, and I wrote the idea down on a post-it note. Most of my projects are written down on post-it notes. But I'm Liz, Spitzy DIY. Um, wear a mask. <laughs>